Hello. I'm back to show you the silk paper process. Because I'm fairly new to this, I still haven't got used to talking and working. So you might find there are long spaces where I'm just going to be quiet. Um, this is the silk fibre. We need to lay down a layer of net onto the tray and then we're going to pull the fibres out and we're going to lay them in a row to start with and then overlapping the next row just so we don't get too many holes although you get a lovely lacy effect on the edge if you want a neater effect you can fold it over while it's still wet and press it um, but I quite like it all loosey-goosey on the edges once it's finished it's a lovely paper for making book covers or you can cut it out using your big shot and your dies you can cut shapes out of it so that's one layer you can put little bits on here if you want to you can put some little bits of uh, that's just lavender that I'm putting on there and then you go back the other way the layers always have to be parallel to each other so to give the fibers something to mesh I'm using Tusser silk because it is, it is the slightly cheaper equivalent. You can do this with other fibres, but to get that lovely lustrous look, you need to really use the silk. Once you've done it a bit more, of course, you can use mulberry silk. But for now, this is just a lovely honey, honey Tusser silk. And it shows up the combination of things that you're going to put on top of it really nicely. I'm going to use a bit of sparkle today. It's horrible to get this out of the packet. And I'm going to use some of my silk rods. These are a byproduct of silk making and they're actually cut off the rods at the side of, from the machines when you buy them you can actually pull them off in layers but you can see even now that they give a lovely sheen to the top and they just provide a sort of just a different effect on the top of the paper You can layer them down any way that you want. You can crisscross them. You can weave them. And I'll just lay one leaf in there so that you can see that. We're then going to use a few spare fibres to go back across the top. Just a few fibres just to make sure that all of that gets trapped in. Now you see I'm using all naturals here. I like to use naturals because then I can go on and dye them. You can do anything once it's, it's dry. You can emboss it using your embossing pads or you can paint it and it can be dried in any shape or form that you want it to have I'll show you some more samples when I finish doing this I'm now going to put some warm water on it not everybody does this this is just to break up the surface tension of your fibre 
you need your other piece of net to put on the top and you're going to smooth it down this is just to get the flight the water across all of the layers turn it over give it a little bit more water and then I'm just going to rub it across just to try and get any little air bubbles out of it Then you're going to use one half of your J cloth just to mop up some of that excess water. Turn it over again and do the same. You can see there now on the back side of it where the lavender's come through. There you are, you can just see that. And then we're going to apply the medium. I've got a large paintbrush and I'm just gonna brush it on. As you get used to working with this, you'll know what's the right amount for the number of layers that you've used. Uh, if you want to make um, bags or larger pieces with it, then you'll need to use um, something that's a bit sturdier, like the cellulose adhesive. And if you just want a more lightweight fabric, then something like the Joe Sonja fabric medium would be much better. This is a, a happy medium between the two and even now sometimes I get this wrong and I put too much on and I end up with a really stiff piece of paper but you can still do things with it. If you think you've got too much on it won't matter. I'm going to turn it over and just give it a light brush on the back. just to make sure that the medium goes through all of the layers. And I'm going to use my second piece of J cloth to take some of the damp, take some of the medium away. Not too much, because this is what holds your fibres together, but just enough to get rid of a bit of that. Now if we live somewhere a little bit warmer than the lovely old UK we could hang this outside as it is in the net just hang it up by its two clips and just let it drip until it's dry. Um, here I use a grid over a bowl and you just leave it until it's dry. You can release it from its top layer if you want to at this stage and fold back the corners fold back the edges to make it a bit neater I never bother with this I love the feathery edges but if you if you like neater edges then you just fold them in so that is our very simple piece of silk paper and I will come back and show you what that looks like when it's dry I've got a couple of other pieces that I've made on other days. This is a piece that I made. You can see it's got large skeleton leaves and it's got some banana 
fibre running through the bottom there and lots of lavender going through it. That was made with three layers of silk. This one has been um, rippled and painted. You can use um, different colours silks. That's a lovely yellow and grey piece. And then this piece has been made with a very dark silk and dyed silk rods. It's sort of a peacock effect. I hope you've enjoyed watching that and you're all going to have a go now at making silk paper. Um, until the next time, thank you. Bye-bye.